Oh my gosh. OSHA might lock me up. I have a hole in my fork. My goodness. Daggone metal termites must have done that. Anyhow, I'm going to put you on a tripod. I have... See if I can figure out where I'm at in that tripod. I think I'm going to be about there. And I'm going to be dead center, dead center on that. So I think I'll be in there. Anyhow, I've gotten a, a lot of a lot of feedback. Some good, some bad. Say it's a great idea, not a great idea, all this kind of stuff. OSHA's gonna, you know, basically make you throw these forks away if you're in a big industry, but I'm not in a big industry. Um, but I'm gonna show you why I think those holes in that forks. If there's a need need to use those forks other than just lifting up pallets, I'm going to show you how that's really safer than anything else. And um, I think OSHA OSHA needs to do some explaining on why they think that that's unsafe. The, and, and I'm going to go over that in this picture why I don't think it's really an issue. Um, so let me let me start. I, I got a lot of nonsense I'm going to go on. Somebody said I had anorexic forks. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the anorexic fork thing. And uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Obviously, the people that are leaving me these comments, most of them don't know they're from a hole in the ground. These forks here are four inches wide by one and five eighths. Okay, which are, yeah, one and five eighths. So they're one and five eighths thick. Okay, um, the hole that I got in both of these is five inches back. It's not 11 sixteenths hole. This is 11 sixteenths right here is the thickness on that, okay? The front of the forks are tapered. Almost all forks are tapered in the front and a lot narrow. The front of the fork in this area, in my opinion, is made for a guide. It's like a funnel to funnel you into where you're going. So if you're coming into a thing, it's going to push the fork over just a hair to get it to go in. Those are guides. They're not meant to pick up whatever it's supposed to be. Now I look for the ratings on these forks. I see serial numbers there and I see serial numbers here and I see numbers back here. I'm sure that there's probably a rating stamp on these forks somewhere because it's probably mandatory. I, I don't know if, if, uh, if they're not, I'm surprised OSHA would even probably let you even use the forks. So I don't know. But somebody said, oh man, they're anorexic forks. Well, let me tell you the rebuttal to that right off the bat because I'm doing most of the time the forks are on that machine over there Okay, now I have another set of forks in the back that I wrote down the size of them, but I, I uh, The other forks that I got are five inches wide another inch wider and one three-quarter inches thick back at the back end They they probably weigh uh, Between the pair of them. I, I wouldn't be surprised they are 100 pounds heavier so if I can pick up anything these forks can pick up with that machine, which that could pick up, it's tilting, tipping is 6,000 pounds, so I know I've had 6,000 pounds on these things because I've had that thing up on its nose. So why would I put heavier forks on to reduce my payload that I can move? That doesn't make any sense. So as long as these are working fine, um, seem to be adequate and all that kind of stuff, use these. I mean, there's just no point in, in uh, having to reduce your max load that you can pick up by putting heavier forks on there. So that's, that's that. Now as for OSHA being uh, on the holes in, in these, I've seen a lot of holes in forks, okay, where they blast a hole with a torch. I don't really care for that, okay? Um, I, I, I don't know which is stronger, that, that's somebody, but some of the nuts on the bottom of trailer balls, and they do it for a trailer ball, okay? So if you put the trailer ball on there and you've reduced that, you've probably reduced that quite a bit, but I still don't think it'd break off because half of it would be on the strong side, half would be on the weak side. It might bend the tip of your fork, but I've never seen any forks bend, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that have. <clears throat> but if you're bending the tip of your fork, it's probably because you're not using it properly, you know? These forks, let's say, let's say they're rated at 6,000 pounds, which I got a feeling they're not. Um, I'm not going to pick 6,000 6, pounds up in here, but I'd venture to say it could probably move a lot from just here to here. That I'm using it as a guide. The 6,000 pounds meant for back in this area, just flat off. Um, as for this tool, a lot of people now the forks, the forks here. 
I see a lot of people, I, I guess the forks are not high enough, they'll wrap a chain around the fork to pick something up, which I'm all right with that. But as you go up and those forks come back and you don't keep them level, you stand a chance of sliding all the way back into the machine or sliding off the end and dropping your load. Just flat out that you're gonna do one or the other. Um, I even saw a video, I don't know, a week ago where somebody was taking something off a trailer and they had this on there and they got up and the angle was too high and these things started sliding. They were sliding in so they wouldn't have lost their load. So I don't think that that's um, uh, as safe as having those holes in the end of a fork. Now, what I think, what I think OSHA did is OSHA's trying to OSHA's trying to save the world from stupid people. Okay, just flat out. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because there's a lot of stupid people out there. And I'm not saying I don't do stupid things from time to time. Okay, but you almost got to be a little bit, I, I don't know, what common sense. You got to have a little common sense when you go out there. Um, maybe if you're trying to move something or not doing something or your brain gets frustrated like when I threw the, threw the cell phone the other day, maybe you get out of it and it, I guess, once again, that's my saying, you got to pay to be stupid. The government shouldn't be sitting there trying to tell you how to do everything. It, it's good. But I got a feeling why they said there's no holes allowed in the forks is because some people were probably drilling them back there. They had something they had to pick up, so they drilled them back there, and the fork broke off back there. Because I could see back there, with three foot of leverage, how you could have a situation where those break off. That's why they're in the front, not in the back. Now, I see one person said, oh, you just need to put a clamp on it. I would never trust a clamp to move anything, okay? Clamp is for holding, but something like this, it's not, it, it's not in my realm of I think it's safe, okay? And then that goes to another thing. You gotta decide what is your safety factor. What, is, what do you feel comfortable with? What do you feel common sense tells you is good or bad or, or something like that? Because most people that are doing this kind of nonsense with forks probably got fairly good common sense, but every now and then you do something stupid. But when this thing comes in, a lot of people ask me, what, what good is that for? Well, I see a lot of people, like I said, put trailer balls in there and they move trailers in and out of places. But think about that. When you raise up, if you don't have the angle right, if you, all you got to do is misjudge, next thing you know, you're going to be putting that into the trailer receiver and maybe pop the ball off. Did you think of that? I don't know. Maybe you did. Anyhow, this goes in here and I drop a... These are tractor pins. I like to think they're grade eight. I don't think they are. Um, and what I did, that's that's the most common size, um, common size width that I use. And so that's what I made it that way. And I got little paint marks. If you get it closer there, you can get the pins in there. I'm not gonna put the other pin in there. But another person asked me, what good is it? Well, I put a trailer receiver in, I put a D-ring in it. Anything that you can put in a receiver, you can put in there. Okay, so that means you have the versatility of anything you can and anything you can make. I've made some things that go on two inch receivers. Now, this thing here is made to go this way. I'll move, I'm not going to measure anymore. That's what I was measuring with. I'm going to pull the pin out. Another thing I did that was kind of good see this thing? Take your pin out and put a bolt in there. So when you do that, you put it in like that, it goes in there, it can't get out. It's kind of a pain in the neck from time to time, but it keeps it from coming out. See, this one here can come out. But if you put a long bolt in there, and then hammer over the end of it, when it goes in, it's locked in. I've done that on a couple chains. Um, you can also hook it on there and hook it on there. I'm going to take it off for now. This thing can go on this way. You can flip it over and put it on this way. Of course, I got the hands in the right place. But then you, you can still hook onto the D-ring if you want. You got chains, so if you're pulling a trail, a trailer, okay, which a lot of people, when they got the ball hitch on the end, okay, where are they going to put their safety chains in case they do flip it out? This way here, if I have a trailer receiver in here, I put a safety chain there, safety chain there, and 
something else there if I want. Okay. Number two, if you got a trailer ball on the one side, it's making your whole machine favor one side more than the other. If you're picking it up in the middle, you're a lot better off. If you're picking up something high, so you got your forks up at a real steep angle, you get two feet higher out at the tip as opposed to in there. Let's see what else. You can turn it around this way. I mean, this thing is quick, easy to make. Quick, easy to make. Now, let's say you have the holes in there. You got all this extra steel around here supporting around that hole. I'm sure what you took out, it, this would would make up for it. Like I said, I saw I saw a person recently. They had the straps on like this, picking something up, and the strap started to slide down, slide down the thing. Because when you're raising it up, a lot of times your forks start to tilt back. I don't know if you could see that. <clears throat> and I can raise it up. I could raise it up on that thing, but I just don't feel like doing it. But um, uh, what else is what else is there? I, I had a whole list of things, but they were in my mind, and my mind goes crazy. But uh, they were asking me all, what what can you do with this thing? Well, there's there's some of the things you can do with it. You have an enormous amount of, and you just gotta put it there, put the holes in there. And drop the pin in so now your load is not going in not coming off it's locked in you can run chains down this way say if you want a, a short chain something chain you can put it in this way and, and then hook it on here you can, I mean it's just so versatile um, and I do have a D ring like this welded onto a receiver here I got step different stepped uh, trailer hitches for different height heights of things, <coughs> but I do think that that's a uh, a lot safer, and I think OSHA OSHA's all right in uh, some things. They just it's it's the government. They got carried away. You know, bureaucratic people that have never been on a set of forks. If they had, they're probably trying to. They know that that's not that that's not unsafe. They just say it's unsafe. And the reason I'm guaranteeing you they're just saying it's unsafe is because they'll come out to a job site and they'll see somebody with hole here, hole here, hole here, hole there, hole there. Who knows? <coughs> i got a peanut stuck in my throat. I've been eating peanuts. And once you start getting back out of the guide or funnel area of your forks, I am tendency to believe with them. So, and then even on the guide, if you have over a certain length hole, so they might say, okay, if they change the regulations and said, okay, you can have a half inch hole in a four inch wide thing. You can have an inch and a quarter or a, um, you know, regulate the height, the hole, depending on the width of the fork there to justify how much you're allowed. Maybe it's got to be a drilled hole as opposed to a cut with a torch hole, which would be irregular as heck. But, you know, I, I think that... Um, when they go out to a job site, they're trying to figure out this, figure out this, you know, does it fit the regs? You know, the regs, it's easier to just say, no holes, period. Doesn't mean it's unsafe, it's just, that's how they control it. So I think you got a situation there. So a lot of the people here that came in and gave me a hard time on that, I would venture to say, you never even used a set of forks. You know, I bet, and I like to hear, I like to hear from all the people I like to hear back from all the people that said, you know, what do you use this for? That's the stupidest thing in the world. What does it do? It just keeps the forks from going wide and wide. No, it spreads the weight out. So you're not just favoring this side of the machine or that side of the machine or one fork. Um, it does a lot of things. And if, and if you're too stupid to realize that, then you shouldn't be using a set of forks. That's the bottom line. You know, you got to be a little responsible. OSHA's trying to take the responsibility out of the operator and put it on something else, which is typical things that the government does, which I'm not going to get into that. Um, I think for them to regulate no holes in the forks, they're not being particularly reasonable, but they probably don't have the ability to be reasonable. I've seen them go into job sites and do some stuff that was just appalling. And I think that there, are, I, I think uh, if an OSHA person came and really looked at this, 
and did some studies on it, which they've probably already done a million dollars worth of studies on it, out of taxpayers' expense. They'd realize that this doesn't hurt the forks. <coughs> I bet it doesn't take 1% out of them forks. And then when you add this in, that just adds more stability. So, um, because that adds a lot more steel in this end of the fork. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? You think OSHA's going overboard saying, I don't think they went overboard by saying no holes in forks. I think what they went overboard in is not regulating the size of the hole and the location of the hole in the forks. Okay? And so the people that say, oh, it's, it's, it's dangerous because it's against OSHA, doesn't mean it's dangerous. just means it's not the way it was, came from the factory. Um, doing car inspections, typical government thing. You had to inspect the car and somebody upgraded something better than it was originally but it would not pass Maryland inspection. You realize back in 60, 64, 65, 66, and 67 in the state of Maryland, you could sell a brand new Corvette with side pipes on it, but you could not resell it because it had side pipes on it, and the Maryland um, law said you couldn't have side pipes on a car back then. You know, so that's stupid things. <clears throat> uh, so anyhow, I can get into a lot of other things, but I'm, I guess I'll leave it alone at this point. You know, leave a comment down in the bottom. I'm hoping that the people, that, you know, what good are these? They're not just for keeping the forks at a distance. <coughs> moving a trailer, moving this, moving that. Safety chains. You got the ball on there. You got your trailer hitch on there. Where are you hooking your safety chains to? You know, if you just hook them, hook them around there, it ain't going to do nothing. You could hook, like I said, if you got safety chains coming off your off your trailer, boom, there's your safety chain right on the trailer. It's a lot safer. I bet that this setup, I bet you this setup here on forks would have a lot less accidents with this size hole in them than people trying to do a lot of other goofy things that are done. And now there's, I've seen some where you got a chain that comes from back here. I don't know if I'm in the, in the channel there. Yeah, I think I am. I've seen some that have, have chains on them from uh, in the back there. And I could, I could do that, you know. If you want to do that, if you think you're going to pull something really heavy, <coughs> I'd have to turn that around. You can still tighten it up like that. But see if you don't have... Now that's going to keep it from going forward. What's going to keep it from coming back? Well, then you got to put a rod in here. Okay. So you got so much contraption that can go wrong at that point, which is far <coughs> more than can go wrong with two pins. If you, if you turn... I guess if I turn that around, like I said, these are pretty versatile. And it was just a, a real quick make. I, I think it's a six inch channel. I had a tape down here. Whoops, channel's this way. Six inch channel. Uh, six inch channel. No, that's five and a half. That's six, that's probably so it'll fit a bigger set of forks that I got out front. Another thing, <coughs> uh, how are we doing time-wise? Another thing that I made is, uh, I'm not going to put it on there, but I'll, I'll show you. I got a big flat plate. See the two holes? You can see the hole there. You can see the hole there. I don't know what that hole there is for. Oh, there, it's it's a further in hole, so I can change it to different locations. That's uh, about a three foot square plate, half inch, uh, quarter inch thick. Sometimes you got to move things that just take a, a flat piece, so you can put it in. <coughs> you can put that on those. What else? I'm trying to think. Um, what are the uses? Like I told uh, one person, uh, if you raise your forks up. Then you tilt them way up, you can get two more feet of height out of it if you're trying to 
lift something and set it in something, which might be good. Um, I think I've run out of jabber, guys. Anyhow, that's kind of my thing on the forks. I don't. I think you're safer with holes in the forks in the proper location with a with a attachment like that. Even your thing out, strength strong, than you are trying to just put a chain over the end. Because that would be your alternative to lift something up, just wrap a chain around the end. And you could, I guess you could, <clears throat> let's say you just got the forks. If you just had the forks and you wrap the chain around it, there's no way you're going to keep it from sliding in. There's just no way. You're going to have to put a bar in there. That's just, that's just the bottom line. And if, if you have something big and heavy, the next thing you know, and it's hanging from a chain, slides in, it might pendulum back right into your head. Now, I'm telling you, this is safer. There's no question in my mind this is safer than uh, just putting a strap on there. And how many other places have you seen on YouTube? <coughs> where they had a strap like this and a strap like this and they raise it up and next thing you know <coughs> slides back there, the pendulum into there okay or if you go a little bit too far it can fall off the end and drop your load and damage the load that you're trying to pick up I don't use those things very often I don't use that thing very often but as cheap as it is to make I bet I, I, bet I don't have 50 bucks in that thing um, and the insurance that it gives me that that load is secure at the time I do it is just, you know, mind-boggling. If, if, if you want to, somewhere I got, uh, no, I guess I don't have it here. <coughs> Look at them squirrels up there. Um, sometimes I just put a hook, I put a uh, shackle or whatever they call it, clevis shackle onto that D-ring. And just have a hook coming down so I can have a swivel on it. Somebody said, oh, I should have put a swivel on there. If I need a swivel, I put a swivel on there. That was one comment. I just don't have it with me right now. I got so much junk going on. <clears throat> Anyhow, I think I've kind of beat this dead horse in the ground. Um, OSHA's good, but they're getting carried away. They're out of control. That's my feeling. And... The only way they can control control this is just say absolutely no holes in forks. It's not allowed because, like I said, you can't fix stupid. Somebody's going to drill a hole back there. And uh, if you're one of those people that did drill a hole back there and OSHA came in, or if I was OSHA, I'd say, no, nah, I'm not using them forks. Out at the tips, don't bother me a bit. When I carry a load, it's behind those tips anyway. It's probably behind the holes. I didn't see how far. These are probably four-foot forks now that I think about it. <coughs> Most of my pallets aren't even that deep. I'm 43 inches, so they're four foot forks. So, I don't know. I think it, uh, it'd be interesting to, if I had unlimited money, I'd buy forks and put them in a press or send them out someplace and analyze what they bend at and how much difference it is from uh, one with a hole and one not with a hole and what its breaking strength is. Somebody could t probably come up with that kind of figure but half inch hole out of a four inch wide thing only it means it's three and a half inches of steel five eighths thick that's pretty daggone strong no point in putting bigger forks on than your machine can pick up a load of if they don't break I'm kind of surprised I couldn't find a rating on those forks but they're probably there. You could probably look up the serial number. I imagine they're probably 4,000 pound forks. Those other ones back there got to be six or 7,000. And I wouldn't be surprised if that 544 I got's got even bigger. Well, I know it's got six inch wide forks on it. That's probably why I put six inch on there. Anyhow, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Send this out to anybody that has to deal with these forks. If you know somebody that's in the construction business or somebody that's in the trailer moving around business, or somebody that's got, got a set of forks and you see them picking up stuff and watching it slide back, send them this film so they can take a look at it and uh, let them judge for themselves. So uh, glad you stopped by. I'm glad I had a lot of good feedbacks and a lot of bad feedbacks because that just gave me the ability to make another video. 
And I've been kind of shy on videos lately. So thanks for stopping by. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Make sure you share this with somebody who's got some forks out there before I lose my throat. Voice. Bye-bye.